participating in this workshop in the newly announced opportunity related to pediatric brain tumors with a special focus on pediatric glioma as part of the Bridge Project. I'm Tyler Jacks. I direct the Koch Institute. I'm one of the two organizers of the Bridge Project, the other being David Livingston from the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center, who will be presiding over the second half of uh, today's workshop and also uh, sort of wrapping up our discussion towards the end of the day. This sounds rather loud. Mike, is that just me or? This sounds a little bit too reverby. <clears throat> so I'm going to spend just a few minutes um, reviewing what the Bridge Project is and uh, sort of setting the stage for the discussion that we're going to have today. Um, most of you, I think, are aware of the Bridge Project, some perhaps not, so uh, we'll spend just a few minutes orienting you. So the Bridge Project, which has now existed for some years, I think probably five-ish years, um, has the goal of linking the two cancer centers here in the Boston area, NCI-designated cancer centers that the DFHCC at Harvard and MIT, um, to what we describe here as solving the most important problems in cancer, uh, the most challenging problems, um, and in particular to take advantage of the strengths that we have um, on our two campuses. And we consider those strengths to be on the MIT side, um, cancer science and cancer-oriented engineering, and on the Harvard side, cancer science and more clinically-oriented research. Um, we think that by linking our investigators together, we can stimulate new research directions and apply new technologies to important problems, clinically important problems in cancer. Um, obviously, by definition, we see these as interdisciplinary efforts, um, and we emphasize the engineering-based disciplines, although we don't exclude non-engineering-based collaborations as well. The Bridge Project, over time, has emphasized these four areas. Um, one I've mentioned already, high impact and unmet medical needs. Um, we think that it's important that the Bridge Project projects have a strong clinical connection. That can mean that the projects involve clinical materials, patient samples, clinical studies, um, or are basic research projects that have a clear vector towards the clinic. Um, we think that uh, to take full advantage of this opportunity, there should be clinical translational potential, if not clinical translational activity. Um, and innovation is stressed. We want these to feel different from the ongoing projects in our laboratories. We want to do something new, something that will excite and motivate um, our communities, our investigators, and frankly, our donors. In terms of um, some of the rules of the game, the bridge projects must have investigators from both campuses. There must be at least one from MIT, does not have to be a member of the Koch Institute here at MIT, but must be an MIT faculty member, and one from the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center. There can be more than one, and many of the Bridge Project teams that we've funded over years have had more than one. Um, there has to be a real sense that this team makes sense. It can't be constructed for the purposes of applying for a Bridge Project. Um, we see that over, uh, we've seen that many times over the years. It's obvious to us when that happens. Those grants do not fare well. So as you're thinking about applying, Make sure that it's sensible why this team was assembled, uh, why this particular collaboration has real value. And in that respect, therefore, this team has to be real. The projects, we expect the projects to be funded for approximately $400,000 per year, and we expect them to be funded for two years, and we expect those funds to be spent roughly equally between the two campuses. That last statement is not held in stone. There can be some adjustments to that. Uh, the $400,000 cap is a real one, uh, and the two years is a real one. Importantly, the second year is not guaranteed. It's subject to um, a review at the end of the first year, and there has to be clear progress made towards your goals. Um, the project proposals are relatively short, five pages in length. And we do allow more than one application for an individual investigator. That is to say, you can have your name on more than one application at the time 
they are received. When we started, the Bridge Project had a series of tumor types that we focused on. In fact, in the first year, we focused on just adult brain cancers and pediatric cancers. Over the years, we've expanded that list to include all the ones that you see here. And most recently, uh, thanks to a generous gift um, from an anonymous donor, uh, we've received funding to focus on pediatric brain cancers, and that's what we're doing here today. Um, so we are assembling to explain the particular uh, opportunities related to pediatric brain tumors, and we're encouraging grants in this area um, now for the first time. We've had funding from philanthropic sources to support this program. It's entirely funded through philanthropic sources, in fact. Um, the Commonwealth Foundation, uh, Bill and Alice Goodwin are our major donors, but all the individuals that you see here have contributed, and foundations that you see here have contributed significantly to the success of the Bridge Project. And when we talk about interdisciplinary and interinstitutional efforts, I think this slide nicely emphasizes the fact that we mean that. These are all the entities at MIT and Harvard that have been supported by the Bridge Project over the past several years. Um, we really began tracking our activities in 2012. We had actually done some seed activities before 2012. Um, <clears throat> we had funded between 2012 and 2015 uh, 15 teams uh, composed of 15 MIT faculty and 23 Dana-Farber faculty, Dana-Farber Harvard faculty over that period. Um, last year, we renewed the program and increased our funding um, due to additional resources. And last year alone, we funded 11 teams. OK, so now focusing on today's activities, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about brain tumors and focus on gliomas. Um, this is in response to specific donor funds and, and wishes. Um, we will have presentations by individuals knowledgeable about the disease, both the science of the disease and the treatment of the disease, sort of some of the challenge that, is, that exists uh, for this set of diseases, I should say. And you'll also hear a bit about some of the Koch Institute's engineering assets. We don't have as many presentations in this area as we'd hoped for. We had one late cancellation, unfortunately. Um, but if there are questions about what assets exist here at the Koch related to specifically engineering, but other assets as well, um, there are opportunities to discuss that. Indeed, at the end of this set of presentations, there's time for networking, and that would be an opportunity for you to ask questions about what particular um, technologies and research areas might be subject or pro uh, proper, um, appropriate for um, collaborations. And finally, these um, proposals will be due on September 2nd. Um, the LOI is not listed here, Anna. Is there? A... Oh, sorry. Um, so we would we are asking, but it's not mandatory that if you are planning to apply, that you send an email to that email address by August 8th, just to give us a sense for how many grants might be fun uh, might be uh, submitted, so we can start to think about our review process. But the proposals themselves will be due on September 2nd. Um, they'll be reviewed in a two-phased process, um, first round internal review. We will then select uh, finalists based on certain criteria, and those finalists will then present their projects for an in-person review on September 21st. That's a very important date for you to note, because if you are applying, it's very, very important that you're present during that process, because if you're absent, your team is not well represented. And it's difficult to be funded if your team is not well represented. So I strongly encourage you to pay attention to that date. Um, that's an intensive review that uh, involves a lot of questions from the review committee. It's really an opportunity for us to probe deeply into what you're, what you're proposing and why this particular bridge project team makes sense. We'll go through this quickly and therefore have funds available to start the projects on October 1st. So from submission September 2nd to funding October 1st is lightning speed as it relates to grants uh, in this day and age. 
you have questions about what is required of you and other details, go to that website and all your answers will be available. Uh, and finally, if you have additional questions, you can write to Anna DeConnick, uh, the executive director of the Koch Institute, and she can steer you in the right direction. And before I turn things over to our first speakers, I want to thank Anna for a, a lot of work with not a lot of lead time in organizing this workshop. Thanks you again to the audience for coming, and also for Lisa Schwartz, who's done a lot of work um, getting us to this point. So I'm going to now um, introduce Torin Yock and <clears throat> David Ebb, both of whom will present on a clinical overview of pediatric brain tumors. Thanks very much.